Solid Edge provides a workflow whereby a user can open a 3D model and its associated drawing from a foreign CAD system and apply the manufacturing dimensions to the 3D imported model as driving PMI dimensions. In this example we're going to be adding a bracket from a foreign CAD system and in this case it's a SolidWorks bracket. Solid Edge provides many translators built in for different CAD systems. All we do is bring in the foreign data into a Solid Edge template. Once we've added it to our Solid Edge part, we're going to go ahead and add additional features. In this case, we're going to add some rounding uh, to this bracket. The chain option allows us to chain the entire face to add round in one feature. The next thing that we want to do is open up the associated drawing that goes with this bracket. So save the part with the changes that we've made and then we'll open up the drawing. Solid Edge's translation wizard allows us to preview what that drawing looks like before we actually open it in Solid Edge. We can zoom in on the preview, we can control the layers, uh, all these things within the uh, wizard. We can also control the mapping of the line styles and the colors to the line widths, as well as many other options. One important thing to note is the scale at which the drawing has been brought in, which in this case it's, it's a half scale drawing. Again, the layers come through uh, as we open up that DWG file. We can even move geometry to different layers within the drawing. Solid Edge provides a unique tool called Create 3D, which will enable us to actually add the manufacturing dimensions from this drawing to the model that we imported from SolidWorks. As we said, the scale is important. We set the scale. and We also tell Solid Edge that we want to include the uh, dimensions as we run the Create 3D command. It's as simple as selecting the views for which we want to add the dimensions. As you can see, it lines up with the 3D model. Notice that the dimensions are brown. That's because they're dangling dimensions that are simply attached to the sketch. And with Solid Edge, we have the unique ability to take those dimensions and actually migrate them to the 3D model. As we hide the sketch, you'll see that the dimensions are now attached to the model. And we can use those dimensions to actually drive the 3D geometry. Now the intelligence is moved from the sketch directly to the model. Here we're going to modify the height of this cut. And notice that Live Rules also works for us and uh, makes it symmetric. So the cutout on the opposite side reflects the same change that we're making on the right side. Now that we've added those dimensions, we'll simply hide that particular user-defined set and we'll turn on the next one, which in this case is the uh, top view. Once again, we want to attach the dimensions to the 3D model. Once those dimensions are attached, of course, we can modify how those dimensions are displayed and drag them into new positions, make them easier to edit. And finally, we'll take the last user-defined set, which is the side view, and we'll attach those PMI dimensions as well. It's possible to do all of these at one time if we would have just turned on the, the uh, last user-defined set, which displays all of them at the same time, and you could attach them all actually at the same time. Here we're going to lock a dimension, and we're going to use synchronous technology to actually drag uh, the main frame back uh, slightly. 
You can also do that with a dimension. Once we've saved the part, we're going to add this to our assembly. So from the parts library, we'll drag the part into our Iron Eagle assembly. As we bring it in, we can rotate it into a position that's closer to how we want it to be oriented as it's placed. And then we just simply use assembly relationships to actually put it in the correct position. In this case, we're going to align some holes. And we're also going to center the bracket within the uh, sheet metal frame of our Iron Eagle. We're going to do that through reference plane. We know that the reference plane is in the middle of the part because we had symmetry. And so we just simply select the center reference plane and align it to the center reference plane of the frame. So as we rotate it, you can see that the bracket's not quite wide enough. We can use synchronous technology as though this was a, a part created in Solid Edge, even though it was a Solid Works part. We get the same behavior that we can use symmetry and we can also drag uh, faces within the part to make it fit within the assembly. Here we're just going to connect the face to a key point uh, on the uh, frame. And again, because we have symmetry in the part, the frame on the opposite side is dragged out equally, and because we put it on center, it now fits directly between uh, the frame. We also need the small ears to align with the uh, transaxle. So we'll select a hole and select the small plane. And as we drag this around, you can see how it adjusts uh, the, uh, the ears. And we're just simply going to align with a hole in the assembly. And now both of those holes line up perfectly. And so that's how we can bring in a part from a foreign CAD system, translate it into Solid Edge, and add the manufacturing dimensions, and then tweak it to make it fit our application.